rules that the respondents were aware of. It was up to the respondents to make the necessary arrangements to make sure that as at the time that they filed their documents, they should be able to serve the same on the petitioners. But even so, my lord, <coughs> the following day when the documents were ultimately served on us, they were served, the earliest documents uh, that were served on us were for the third respondent, and they were served on us at 3 p.m. in the afternoon, and followed by the first and second respondent served at 3.50 p.m. in the afternoon. <coughs> no explanation has, has been given, my lords, for why those documents were served at that time, when it was well within their knowledge that the very nature of this application, and of course the voluminous nature of the documents that were eventually served on us, as you can see on the face of the application, would require the respondents, or rather the petitioners, to discern those documents and to prepare responses by way of rejoinder, as they are entitled to, as we are entitled to within the rules, within time. The same was served on us late. Uh, pleadings have, uh, have now closed, my lords, and we are obviously, as Mr. Ngatia has stated, unable to get the petitioners to sufficiently appreciate the issues raised in the answer to the petition and the affidavits and to instruct us on appropriate rejoinders for the same. To that extent, my lords, the petitioners are equally uh, prejudiced in the sense that they will not be able to exercise a right that is conferred by the rules to file a rejoinder. And of course, this then goes to the roots of the right to fair hearing. As we speak, my lord, we have not been able to prepare any rejoinder to the documents that were served on us late. And in fact, as at this morning, when we were filing our, um, our list and bundle of authorities, I was in the registry myself, and one of the documents that was also served late, and which is not in the application, was being served at the time. And those, that is the written submissions by the respondents. So my Lord, for those reasons, we pray that the application be allowed with costs. Thank you, my Lord. <coughs> My Lord, on behalf of the first respondent, the application by the petitioner is opposed. And My Lord, the first respondent um, has opposed that application by way of an affidavit sworn and filed in this Honourable Court today by Mr. Moses Kipkoge, and I will be brief in my response, my lords. The petitioner acknowledges that the responses were indeed filed in time. And my lord, for the purposes of the response, it is important for me to point out that those responses were filed in the registry of this Honourable Court at 11.24 p.m. My Lord, that is important because this court had gone out of its way to ensure that its registry was open and its staff were available to receive the responses on the last day that they were due. Your Lordship will note that in the replying affidavit of Mr. Kipkoge at paragraph 5, he depends to the fact that at 20 minutes to midnight, 15 minutes after the documents were received in this registry, he went to the chambers of the advocates on record for the petitioner, and they were closed. There was nobody to accept service. My lords, on behalf of the first respondent, I submit that in the same manner that the court had gone out of its way to keep its registry open, it was incumbent on the petitioner in this matter, or counsel on record for the petitioner, to ensure that there was somebody in their chambers to receive service of documents. There was nobody, and my lord, it has come from counsel for the petitioner that the documents were served on them the very next possible day.
Having filed the responses in time, my lords, there was absolutely nothing the first and second respondents could have done to cause or to effect lawful service on the night of the 24th of August this year. As, council, uh, as chambers, my lord, for the council for the petitioner was closed. My lord, for those reasons, I do urge you to dismiss the application before you. The responses are important and they were filed on time. They were served on the 25th through no fault of the first and second respondent. And the first and second respondent should therefore not be prejudiced for that. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Modi. Most of you, Madam Chief Justice, on behalf of the third respondent, it's important, my lord, that we put this matter in proper perspective. It is admitted that the response by the third respondent, together with all the replying affidavits, were filed within time. That is admitted. And there can't be any dispute because all this was being done within the glare of the media. We filed much earlier than respondent one and two. The difficulty that arose on that night is that counsel for the petitioner hadn't done what we had done on a Sunday to make himself available for service. And that is pleaded or deponed to in our replying affidavit that we made every effort to go to counsel's office, Mr. Awele, to go and effect service and we found his chambers closed. What we all expected is that as we had done much earlier, a few days earlier, is to make ourselves available for some service. Indeed, when they were serving the petition, we actually came over to his chambers to accept our service. My Lord, it's important we don't lose sight of one very important fact. That once we filed the response under your Rule 12, there is no rejoinder by the petitioner. Pleadings are closed. Hence, <coughs> counsel cannot benefit from my argument to say that there will be prejudice. There can't be prejudice because under the rules, the petitioner is not entitled to a further affidavit to respond to that which we have deponed to. Another thing that, my Lord, is important to put in perspective <coughs> is that this application that you, we are now arguing before you was served upon us at 4 p.m. today. 4 p.m. today, as we are coming to the deputy registrar, is the time that the application was served on us. With the right touch, this shows the zeal and ability of the council appearing before you we are able to respond almost instantaneously. Within minutes, we were able to file a replying affidavit and written submissions. For the simple reason, my Lord, that as Chief, my Lord Chief Justice indicated, we have a duty to <coughs> do all that is within our power to expedite this process. This is an application which is a reaction to the two motions that the third respondent filed. It is a reaction, my lords, because council is also trying to have a go at us, but is having a go at us is on a premise which does not exist under the rules. I would therefore request, my lords, to hold and find that while I have served the following day, we served the following day, and we served a complete set complete set. There is not a single annexure that was left out. We found a complete set of all the written documents, the DVDs, we served everything upon council. My lords, we should not be faulted at any, in any way. 
My lords, I would request you and urge you to hold and find that the application as a reaction ought to be rejected and to admit the documents as they are and to excuse the inability to serve before midnight on that date because there was no fault on the part of the third respondent or counsel appearing for the third respondent. Unless my lords have any questions, as I indicated, within that time, I have filed and served written submissions and are replying at it. Most you. obliged. Thank you, Mr. Ngata. Ah, thank you. We will deliver rulings on all these applications tomorrow. My Lord Chief Justice, with your kind permission, uh, there was one point uh, I wanted to mention uh, regarding my application, not an argument, it was a request to the court. Uh, and I would, I would request your leave. There was a document that was filed uh, late, one of the authorities to the application <coughs> for joinder as amicus. Uh, I have uh, explained this to my colleagues. The copies were availed to the registry and I hope they are with the court. Uh, this, this is a, an authority from a book on electro jurisprudence that has been published with the assistance of uh, the judiciary, I believe, and is on the chapter on Amicus Curie. I, I'll therefore be requesting the court. I apologize, I was not uh, able to do this earlier, although I'd written an email, to include that as one of the authorities in uh, the submissions of uh, proposed Amicus for myself. And, and lastly, uh, there was also a failure uh, to file substantive amicus uh, brief together with the submissions. And using the same uh, arguments that have been raised by my colleagues before this court, and also the fact that the proposed uh, amicus brief should not duplicate arguments in the submissions of the parties, it was important that we awaited a receipt of the submissions of the parties before we could file the amicus brief. So I would request also on that same basis that the court allow the amicus brief in the event the court was to admit uh, my application to be filed within 24 hours thereafter on the specific items that have been indicated on the face of the application. That is all, uh, my lords, my ladies. Mr. Kanye, I understand you to be saying <coughs> that the amicus brief you intend to file will be filed after the court has made a decision as to whether or not to admit you as amicus. My Lord, because sorry, the basis upon which the court would make a decision is the amicus brief. My Lord, if I may respond uh, to that very important uh, question. Uh, yes, <laughs> the, the jurisprudence of the court is that uh, parties who seek to be enjoined as amicus first of all, do not have a right of audience prior to joinder. And secondly, they do not have uh, a right to duplicate submissions that have 
been filed or will be filed by the parties. My understanding is that the substantive jurisprudence of the court militates against an intended amicus filing the substantive <coughs> submissions, but they should show through the affidavit or the application their competence and the specific area where they would like to submit on on the basis of that competence. So that uh, even though there were some directions requesting for amicus brief, in my application I made a specific prayer to be allowed to make oral and written submissions after the application for joinder has been had, hopefully with successful outcome. Because otherwise, the amicus brief would not be targeted as required by the jurisprudence of the court. And, and those submissions were only uploaded on the website today. Uh, there is even one set of submissions that has still not been uploaded. And that is why I'm making this very humble request, because I do believe that the submissions of the amicus would assist the court very much uh, beyond the partisan interests of the other parties to bring in the public interest element. That is all. Lord, could we now that is in the form of an application respond in one minute? Hmm? Now that uh, it has been presented just as an application. Just, just a minute, Mr. Uh, Council, Mr. Kanjama. My Lord. I'm not preempting your application. And it will, hard be, it will be hard on merit subject to what the court says. But uh, because of the nature of this matter and the time factor, don't you think uh, your interest as Nairobi chapter of LSK could be well served by the <coughs> principal and headquarters of LSK, the national LSK? Otherwise, if every chapter were to come in, it will never end. My, my Lord, uh, that's uh, again a very good question. And uh, for purpose of clarification, my application is not made on behalf of any branch of the law society. Are you coming personally? Yes, I as am you? coming personally. As, I, I, not as <coughs> chairman of the chapter, Nairobi chapter. I have indicated my various competencies, but the application is clear. Even though I'm in various organizations, it is my personal and professional competence that I seek to assist the court with. And that is why I set out my personal experience and not the experience of any branch or chapter. Thank you, Mr. Kanjama. We, we will uh, deal with that tomorrow. Most obliged. Yes. Now we come to the we come to the petitioner's application for our, is it access to information? Who is prosecuting it? Yes, sir. I will, my lord. Um, my lord, can I be heard before my learned friend prosecutes that application? Mm. My lord, on the third, on behalf of the third respondents. When that application was filed and certified by the court, an order was made that it be served only on the first respondent. Uh, there was no order that it should be served on the third respondent, although we are naturally uh, an important player in relation to the same. So I would like to seek clarification on behalf of the third defendant whether that was just, you know, a slip or a slight oversight or whether it is a considered decision of the court that the third respondent should not participate in this. Secondly, my lord, that application is premised on a number of affidavits, which are the subject matter of the application argued by my learned friend, uh, Fred Ngatia. So uh, I'm of the considered view that until you make a ruling on whether those affidavits will be struck out or not, I don't think, my lord, it's the right thing for us to argue an application 
whose substratum is being challenged or there is an application already that's before the court. So uh, we will appreciate as a part respondent if we could get clarification on those two issues. Mr. Minasir, don't you have a response to that application? Yes, my lord, we have a response to that application. Yes, we have. Filed um, <laughs> yesterday? Yes, we, have. We, have a, we have a response. But we are just seeking whether, is that order, was it a considered view that we should not participate? You, you have filed a response? Yes, my lord, we have filed. Yes, you will be heard. We are most obliged. Thank you. Mr. Abnasir, yes, my Lord. Mr. Abnasir, even in ordinary uh, matters, you can raise a PO and the court tells you that uh, we will deal with the PO in the main application. I'm guided, my Lord. So we will deal with all those in the main application. Thank you. So who is prosecuting the application for? I am, uh, my lord. My lord, is there time indication for prosecution or application? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Uh, my lord, then if it's ten minutes, then I'll try. Now, my lord, this application for access basically to information contained in the servers of the first respondent and logs and transactions uh, to which ordinarily we would have access is premised on the prayers which are found in the petition. My Lord, you would find that the prayers in the petition, the relief sought in the petition, uh, number is found on page 22 of the petition, the paragraph marked E. My Lord, you would find that from paragraphs A, To G, the question of scrutiny and the the the, the trans, uh, forms used for the transmission of the presidential election results are specifically prayed for. And if you look at the body of the petitions, my lord. In various paragraphs of the petition, the question of the relay and transmission of results uh, is contained in the, in the petition, uh, together with the lack and failure of operational transparency, uh, those are matters which are specifically brought out as complaints in the uh, petition. My Lord, when this court dealt with the first presidential election petition in 2013, the court came to the conclusion that the system of elections in Kenya is a manual system. Basically, that was the decision of, of this court. Since then, the position has changed by dint of various legislation, particularly the election amendment laws 2016 and the election laws amendment act of 2017, in which the question of what is the system of elections is in Kenya. And my Lord, that question is addressed by Section 44 of the Elections Act as amended by the various legislation or statutes that I've referred to. 
and it says that, the sub, uh, that there is established, that is section 44, an integrated electronic electro system that enables various functions which include voter registration, uh, voter <laughs> identification, and the transmission of results. My Lord, in that particular section, subsection 3, requires of the Commission to use such technology that is simple, accurate, verifiable, secure, accountable, and transparent. And that read together with um, subsection 5, which is a requirement for the Commission to de uh, develop regulations my Lord, the importance of technology and the retention of records in the system that is used, the electronic system that is used, and access to the information that is kept in the electronic system in its various functions is underpinned by Section 44. My Lord, there was enabling legislation in terms of regulations which were passed uh, and those are contained in the regulations that relate to technology. I'm allowed, if you look at those regulations, uh, particularly part three, which talks about testing, certification, and audit of technology, you will find the centrality of technology, the use of technology in elections, and that is for a purpose. The purpose is contained in Article 81 of the Constitution, which describes and defines the general principles of the electoral system. I'm allowed in the petitions, some which have come to this court by way of appeals. That system has been elaborated and considered by this court on many occasions, but for the moment, I will deal only with the requirement that in any system of elections that is used, it is required that it must be transparent and administered in an impartial, neutral, efficient, accurate, and accountable manner. That read together with Article 86, my Lord, establishes the centrality of information in answering the question of accuracy, transparency, accountability, and credibility of elections. Now, my Lord, it would be not quite appropriate for me uh, to quote Joseph Stalin, because we are not a Stalinist state. But Stalin said, that those who matter in elections are those who vote, are not those who vote. Those who matter are those who count the votes. The crisis in Kenya has been not about those who vote, but those who count and how they transmit the results of what they are counted in the elections. That has been with us since the year 2002, the question of transmission of results. <laughs> and how those results are transmitted. And therefore, through various legislation where the question as to whether results which are announced or declared at the constituency or the polling stations are provisional or otherwise, that question was put to rest by the legislation that was passed towards the end of last year and this year, that the votes that are counted at the polling stations and announced by the presiding officer and the collation and tallying of votes and the results thereof, thereof as declared at the constituency are final. So the question of transmission of those results to the third tier in the electoral process on election day is an important matter in regard to how those uh, results are transmitted. So, Mr. Rengo, what are you seeking? Your time is about to... What, what, I'm sorry. So, my Lord, what we are seeking is that uh, 
the forms, first of all, the forms that were used in the elections, form 34A and 34B, would, uh, that those should be, uh, the original should be made available to the court. I'm allowed, the easiest way to uh, properly uh, show the court what the problem is, and in our application we have demonstrated, my lord, that nearly all the papers from 34A and 34B that were delivered to this court by the Electoral Commission were either forgeries or they were forms which in one way or another were not authentic and they were not the forms that were uh, set out in the law. And for demonstration, my Lord, just uh, I would invite the court to look at the exhibit um, uh, DN01 and uh, is form 34, document number 7. My Lord, if you look at the forms, first of all, they are not the same. There are some in which the, name, the names are different. Odinga, Raila, Raila, Odinga. The security inscriptions which should be on the forms, the anti-copy uh, 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 security features are not there. And if you look at the end of those forms, the, 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 one, the, the part where the, the total results for each candidate, you find there are some of them there and some are not there. So, my Lord, what are we are asking? And the electoral commission should not hear this, nor should be the third respondent that we should look into these forms to find out. They, they should produce the originals because of the security features that were prescribed by the Commission itself and by the law. And finally, that because the electronic uh, 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 apparatus which are there in terms of servers should tell the whole story about the election. And for those reasons, I beg the court that this application be allowed. Uh, thank you. Just a minute, just a minute, Mr. Orengo, before you sit down. Although your time is up, um, we, we can we can extend a bit of time so that we we are able to understand you. You want the entire? Is it forty thousand eight hundred and eighty-three? They were. From that for a, if I am, yes, if, 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 my, if my correction is right. Yes, yes. Yes. So you want them uh, produced uh, so that? We want them produced because of what the electoral commission delivered mm. within 48 hours yeah. are not genuine from 34 A's. So what do you want? You want the original? We want the original ones so yes. that the return to the elections, looking at those forms, where the court would be able to determine whether what has been brought to court were indeed the Form 34 A's, authentic and with all the security features, and even more importantly, the Form 34 B's that were delivered to the Electoral Commission. I'm allowed in the application and looking at the affidavits, you'd find what we have disclosed as the problem with these forms that were delivered to court. Mm -hmm. They are not the authentic forms prescribed under the law or they do not conform with the first and second respondents security features which again we have referred to in the application. You don't have any particular uh, forms you have flagged out, you want the examination of the entire lot. Uh, we have flagged them all out, like from, from four, we, we, have, we have actually done an exposition of all the form uh, 34B and shown in every respect what's wrong with the forms that were delivered. So those are the, the ones you...